Sri Lanka's most powerful news brand. With Faraz Shalkutali. And a jolly good morning to you. This is Newsline, live as always from the News First studios in Dorset Street in Colombo. And of course, we broadcast on TV One. It's also available live on Facebook and a little bit later on on YouTube. Um, and you can search for us by typing in Newsline on YouTube. And this morning, uh, whilst we await the arrival of our guest, Professor Rajiva Vijay Singh, a former uh, minister and parliamentarian and leader, former leader of the Liberal Party, um, we'll just uh, go through uh, some, of the, uh, some of the news items in today's papers. Uh, the island uh, with, uh, reports that in talks with the Singaporean Prime Minister, the TNA demands an enactment of a new constitution and a referendum this year. And uh, the uh, Presidential Commission of Inquiry into the issuance of bonds by the Central Bank, uh, the Secretary there, Mr. Sumitipala uh, Udugam Surya, has confirmed to the island that uh, uh, he insists that the full report is very much in the public domain in spite of what he calls unsubstantiated claims that it is not. And uh, the Daily News, of course, uh, has uh, starts off with the uh, news that the fi that five former ministers are under the Attorney General's microscope, and that is uh, they suggest that legal action on eight uh, Pressifac reports are to be considered, and uh, various uh, former ministers have been named as having. Uh, needing action taken against him, uh, and amongst those names were former ministers Basil Rajapaksa, Wima Wiravansa, Mindayapa Abe Wardena, former Chief Minister S. M. Ranjik, and several other persons, according to the Daily News there. And uh, the uh, Salon Today uh, says that. Uh, uh, Lakshman Yapa is uh, reported as saying that uh, this government won't keep cases for the next government and that the AG, uh, the Attorney General, is to finalize the requisite amendments by February. And uh, he's, uh, Lakshman Yapa, talking about high profile white collar crimes. And uh, the front page also reports that uh, Presifac, the Special Presidential Commission to investigate serious allegations of uh, fraud and corruption, uh, have uh, reported, uh, according to Gagani Wirakun, that uh, Basiraj Paksa exceeded security detail numbers. Uh, and uh, uh, one more uh, 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 item here. The uh, CID, according to the Salon today once again, uh, says that the CID concludes investigations into four accused army officers. Uh, but uh, the four accused army officers have been, according to this, reinstated. And this is, of course, to do with the Ratapaswala shooting incident. And uh, <coughs> as uh, the newspaper is also reporting that the speaker uh, says that he has no g uh, instructions from government on the extension of the consensual government's term. And uh, uh, Professor Rajiv Vijay Singh is on his way. His, uh, uh, he reports as being about five minutes away and in the meantime we shall have to have a look at uh, the, some of the other uh, stories here. Uh, the, the rupee has come to a uh, new low and it uh, now was trading yesterday at 155. Um, and back to the uh, front page of the uh, Daily Mirror, uh, <coughs> the uh, former uh, Minister G.L. Pierce makes some allegations and suggestions that the bribery commission should look into allegations made by uh, the TNA MP uh, Arnandan about uh, some uh, alleged bribes paid to members of the TNA. And uh, <coughs> the uh, Indonesian president uh, is on a two-day visit to Sri Lanka. And uh, also yesterday's uh, news, of course, was that uh, uh, the Speaker, Karuja Suri, had turned down a request from uh, Minister Ravi Karanaika to, uh, uh, <coughs> to make a statement in Parliament, although that, that uh, statement has be, is widely now available uh, on the Internet. 
And um, Professor Rajiv Vijay Singh is here, and uh, we are going to take a short break while we have Professor seated. Don't go away. Newsline will be back soon after this. Newsline with Faraz Shaukatali. And uh, one for morning again to you. This is Newsline, and uh, we are now joined by our guest this morning, Professor Rajiva Vijay Singh. A very good morning to you, Professor. Good morning, Faraz, and my apologies for being that, late. That's perfect, you're right. Um, now then, uh, Professor Vijay Singh, in the news recently, um, you've made a sort of a rather impactful s speech. Uh, well, what was that all about? Well, I wouldn't call it impactful. It was the Dr. P. R. Anthony's memorial oration. Indeed. And uh, it was an interesting challenge. When I was asked to do it, the topic I was given was the march of folly, the need for political leadership. Mm. And I actually explored, in a sense, the way in which this country, as I quoted, has become an underdeveloped country that keeps underdeveloping. It was the economist that first said it. And uh, you know, I pointed out that, that, that perhaps one of the major problems we face is this desperate clinging to one's own personal agendas mm. and not recognizing the need to actually have a certain amount of public commitment. Mm. That of course requires greater consultation, uh, greater, let us say, understanding of the importance of non-political entities. You know, everything has got politicized. Mm. One standing example I used was the way that despite the commitments in the President's manifesto, mm. the public service continues politicized. Mm. Uh, I did ask when the original amendments were brought in, and then I moved an amendment in Parliament mm. to make permanent secretaries permanent. Right. As you probably know now, uh, permanent secretaries lose office whenever the government changes. They go back into the pool. Uh, well, you know, technically they can be reappointed, mm. but of course the security has gone. Right. Because uh, when you have us, I mean, when I brought this up, the president, you know, he said, no, 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 you need this because we had a very bad secretary in Buddhasasana. Mm. And it never occurred to him, it was precisely on the system he was perpetuating that that happened. Mm. And then the prime minister said, uh, no, but there are always exceptions. And I said, yes, that's the point. You can have exceptions, but the exceptions must be argued for. Mm -hmm. You know, if there's a permanent secretary who's not performing, yeah. then obviously you need to move him. W what about this business where you have politicians, ministers, appointing their own, own, as in family and friends, into positions there within the ministry. Well, that's the other point. That, But let me go to the, offic the mm. officials. Mm. You know, I remember when I first became a permanent secretary, I was asked to make a particular appointment and I absolutely refused. So when you were um, made a permanent secretary, did you join the uh, Sri Lanka Administrative Service? No, no, no. I was an outsider, as so allowed to be. Yeah. Uh, it was an exceptional appointment, but there was a very good reason for it, because the minister was the Minister of Disaster Management and Human Rights. Mm. And I think the president felt that at that stage, human rights was much, much more important mm. and uh, wanted a much more, let's say, focused perspective. Mm. And what I did, which was quite interesting, there was an additional secretary who was a lovely man, and he told me later, you know, he learned a lot from me. Mm. He said he had been asked to do human rights, whereas his specialty was disaster management. Yeah. So, in a sense, I delegated most of that to him. I was very lucky I had gone and he had to help. How easy was it for you to delegate? Very simple. The way you delegate is that you give people the authority to act. I'm doing the same at the Vocational Education Commission. I have wonderful directors who are living up to my expectations. I expect a lot. But, you know, you keep an eye on them. You nurture them. You monitor what's going on. But you give them a free hand. Mm. Now that rarely happens. I'm having a lot of trouble in a lot of the areas we're working with because yeah. people are frightened to delegate. But to go back to the distinction, as I said when I was asked by a minister to appoint people, I said, no, I'm not going to appoint someone at the minister's behest. And he said, other permanent secretaries do it. I said, I'm not another permanent secretary. I said, you have a private staff, which is excessive, mm. but the minister can appoint, and I could when I was a minister, appoint people to particular positions paid for by the state. Uh. One of the things I'm proudest of is when I resigned as a minister, the then secretary wanted to keep on my private staff. 
because right. a lot of them were working very well and in fact my coordinating secretary was transferred into that yeah. ministry. But that doesn't happen normally mm -hmm. because, and the reason you can't really blame the politicians mm -hmm. is that they use that private staff yeah. in order to enhance their electoral prospects mm -hmm. because we have this terrible electoral system where everyone is competing against everyone else. Mm. So, you know, in the old days when you had a constituency, okay, you had to think about jobs for people in that constituency. Yeah. Now you have to think of jobs for people in the whole district. Mm. For instance, the whole vocational education ministry is packed with people from Gaul. In the old days, the Oliville University was packed with people from Gaul because Richard Pratt was Minister of Education. But then? But then I was told by the people in Oliville, yeah. no, 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 but the, the, the guards whom I said, what are you doing here? Yeah. They said, no, the whole Gaul port is packed with people from Oliver because <laughs> Ashraf had sent them there. <coughs> and it's ridiculous. Yeah. And one of the points, you know, we tried to argue, I did a whole the appendix to my speech, is the recommendations that I made as chair of the committee yeah. uh, appointed by the National Human Resources Development Council on better ways of working in the public sector. We had an excellent team, including yeah. SLEDA, Mr. Public Administration, wonderful former civil servants, top of the ladder, Dharma Siri Piris, Mr. Palihakkara, all helping us. And they said it's a very important thing. But the chairman of the NHRTC, who's an admirable man, Dinesh Vira Kodi, mm. he, his last email to me said, you know, what's the point? I give the president and the prime minister, neither of them is reacting. He gave it to Austin Fernando. He suggested a meeting with Austin Fernando because there's no succession plan. And then he actually told me, rather sad, he said, as my wife says, just mind your own business. It's nothing that can be done. And he's a man with influence who's very now, able. Now, this is an interesting point. You know, you say that the Danish said, well, what's the point? There's no reaction from either the president or the prime minister and so on. Is it because they've got too much of work? No, it's because they just cannot clear something and delegate to the right person. So obviously what either should have done when this report came to them yeah. is if they thought it was a good report, they could have written back saying a report is rubbish. I don't think they've even read it. What they could then do is appoint a committee headed hmm. by the secretary to the Ministry of Public Administration this, this and then right? said go ahead and implement this as far as possible. It's very easy. Well, I mean, well, I was... You then, know. then, then, yeah. that case, uh, Professor, tell me this. It's about a month now. Yeah. Well, just under a month. It was out on the 30th of December, the, the Presidential Commission of Inquiry yeah. came to the bonds. It's about a month. The Pressifact report's been out even before, I believe. Now then, it's about a month. The public don't appear to to know, or there's nothing reported, as to any action that is being taken. Is well, it not happening? Is it, are they waiting for some election result? What, well, I have a feeling, that? as as you know, as I've said in my speech, Sri Lanka has nonagata periods where nothing happens. Oh. Now, that generally happens before an election. In Sri Lanka, there are so many elections, none of which coincide. Yeah. This time, they are having them, coincidentally. Yeah. Uh, but because, even though it's a local election, they delayed it so long, it's become vitally important. Mm. You know, if, if they'd had local elections at the due time earlier, they wouldn't have taken on this enormous importance. So nothing will happen. Yeah. And of course you have this appalling situation where you have officials who, in a sense, you know will do nothing. Yeah. I remember I used to send several, and not a new thing, I sent several reports to President Mahindra Rajapaksa. Mm. And when I say, what happened to it? You know, he had one classic answer. He said, you write in English. But of course the point is he used to hand them over, he told me to Lalit, Liratunga. Then I asked Lalit what happened and I said I didn't get it. So I don't know whether it got lost somewhere in that labyrinth. Mm. But the whole point is there must be a system where every single letter uh, which needs the attention of the secretary reaches the secretary mm. and they must respond. You know one of the things that we suggested yeah. is that you must have a limit. When I was secretary of the ministry limit uh, on? On, on, on the length taken to answer. Ah. I told my staff you have to answer every letter in three days and they said to me no 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 that's the minimum. I said rubbish it's the maximum. Right. And it is, it's, it's a, not regulation, it's a, it's, it's a recommendation. Yeah. And the answer is very simple. You answer every letter in three days. So but that, if but you have to ask someone else to act, yeah. and they can't answer it, you send the person who wrote to you 
a waiting letter. Yeah. You say, I'm sorry, I have to get further advice on this. Mm. But I have asked so and so, mm -hmm. and I will answer you in a week. Remind me if I haven't answered you in a week. You know, um, where I'm seven three weeks. I met several people telling me, thank you for answering immediately. And so I said, that is my job. So that an acknowledgement. That's so that that what you can't act. Well, but in you, many areas, you can act. Now, with this RTI business, when, when usual form is you send off a request and all that, and you, you get on literally the last day, kind of, almost, um, an acknowledgement saying, well, well, we've got it and it's been looked into. But that's, they take 14 days to do that, nearly. Yeah. And it should be three days, right. because the so, acknowledgement should be in three days. And you should also in that acknowledgement say what you have done. You know, I have a wonderful file full of charming letters from Austin Fernandez, who's an absolute darling, as you know. And he says things like, thank you, we appreciate your interest in this subject, I have sent it on to so-and-so. And it's a lovely portfolio, I told him the other day when I met him, are you going to do anything? Perfect. And of course, you know, poor man, I think he thinks he's paid to do nothing. No, no. When you look at this, this sort of waiting business, yeah. uh, and it's all a lot of talk, isn't it? We've had, it, there's the bond, then there's this business with the uh, Sri Lankan Airlines, and then the roads, and so on. Yes, I uh, think today is the day that Rajut uh, said, Rajut, no, Rajut has been a speciality of talking abject nonsense, and he claimed that on the 25th of January, which I think is today, yeah. there would be changes in Sri Lankan Airlines. Of oh. course, Knights of March are still with us, so we may find a miracle in the next 12 hours. But we're waiting for a new board, aren't we? Well, he said there would be a new board on the 25th of January. People have forgotten that, so have you for us. Go back. 25th of January was the date he mentioned. But to be, to be fair, yeah. there's so many promises that are being made. You're quite right. Sometimes it gets all a bit fuzzy. Yes, absolutely, absolutely, and that is where, you know, there should be, I think, I think one of the things you should do on this program. Mm. It's just whenever you get a promise, just register it, put it in your diary, and start the program by saying, today is the day that Rajat Sain Ratna said this would happen. You don't get many people committing to a date. Yeah. You know, there are some people who think that the more detail you put into your lies, yeah. the more credible they become. Oh. But you catch them out on those details. Well, yeah, we've had ministers and all sorts come here and give us timelines, uh, and nothing happens. Not in what you take on uh, what, what, what do you think will happen? We have Presifac, mm -hmm. there's supposedly 13 names there. Uh, the the um, Daily News mentions some of those names. Uh, Basiraj Paksawima, we are once a mind, they are probably Wardner, Chief Minister Sam Ranjit, and several other persons according to Daily News. Now, what do you think is going to happen? Why, why isn't anything happening? Why isn't there apparent action? Well, one of the problems, you know, I haven't read the whole Press Effect report, but yeah. I went through the synopsis very yeah. quickly. And it struck me that, you know, after all the hype about massive corruption and so on, the type of thing they're focusing on yeah. is not really what you would consider serious and certainly pales into insignificance in the face of what Ranil has done with regard to the bonds. Yeah. Because, for instance, take what was advertised about Mahindra Rajapaksa. Yeah. Uh, the highlight in, I think, one of the government papers was that, you know, he's to be indicted because he uh, did election propaganda on ITN. Right. Now, doing that mm. was extremely wrong of him, but I don't mm. know that you can say that he was responsible if the board of ITN you know, decided to give him free rights. You know, someone yeah. might say later, yeah. Faraz, yeah. Uh, you know, we're going to arrest Raja Vijay Singha because you, not that I'm standing yes. for anything, but you're giving him so much publicity. Yeah. I mean, it's your decision. Mm -hmm. Now, the biggest problem, of course, is that ITN, the independent television network, is, as you know, the government-owned business undertaking. Yeah. And this is because Jaya Jaya took it over, hmm. and successive governments have clung to it for propaganda. Well, so well, why, I mean, as you can remember, yeah. when this government came in, they sort of almost divided the spoils, and uh, the president's people went into Rupa Vahini, and I think the prime ministers went into ITN. No. So you have a situation where every government uses it for propaganda. And to charge Mahindra Rajapaksa with corruption for that yeah. is really very, very silly indeed. I mean, there may be very serious issues, yeah. and those should be looked at. But if, you know, after all this, yeah. 
the mountain brought forth a mouse. Mm. I mean, there's one of the charges, the 34, is uh, putu ganime akkamita. What does that mean? That in the buying of chairs, irregularities were committed. Is this something to spend massive amounts of money on? It is really quite shocking mm. that when appalling incidents like the bond scam have occurred, mm. that you know they're trying to divert attention you know, by such I, things. Yes, can I say to you, uh, Professor uh, Henrik uh, Ibsen, a thousand words will not leave so deep an impression as one deed. So can't the government take a sort of leaf out of that? And well, of course do, the government can, but do what is the deed. government? What is the government? You have people now, I think President Sirisena has finally decided how utterly corrupt Ranil is. The very fact that he's taking Ravi Karnanayaka around with him mm. as his chief agent in elections mm. is almost, you know, uh, sort of talking a snook at all claims of honesty. And no, Ravi's I, wonderful, wonderful statement yesterday. Yeah, why wasn't uh, well, he allowed to say that on, uh, at, in Parliament? Oh, because the... the, is, the there no, is there no system for that? I have no idea, but the point is, Kari Jayasura doesn't think, believe in systems, he doesn't believe in doing things according to precedent, he just does what is political convenient for the UNP. Including that awful drama in, in Parliament where you know, they were trying to debate something that hadn't even been taken. You no, know, and it was a disgrace that Karuja Asura should have permitted it because the opposition asked for a debate on the bond. Yeah. They didn't give the report. Yeah. But what did he do? He allowed the Prime Minister a chance to reiterate the pitiful attacks he's kept making on Nivad Cabral. Mm. You know, he's gone on and on about it. As you know, when the bond scam broke, yeah. what did Ranil Vikramasinghe do? He made a speech in Parliament attacking his favourite enemies, mm. including Cabral and Shiral Laktikala, claiming that there was nothing wrong with the bonds and Shiral Laktikala who was raising the issue. Mm. He then said he was appointing a committee to look into the obvious dishonesty that took place in February 2015. Mm. The terms of reference of that committee were basically saying, get Nivad Cabral. Mm. If you look at it, yeah. why should he appoint a committee to look at Nivad Cabral well, then? My, my thing is, why didn't they, well, as soon as they came in, yeah. if they knew what they knew, what they say, talk about now, which is that there seemed to have been something wrong during that period, why is it that on the day after he was appointed as Prime Minister and you know, the government missionary started, well, they should have, honestly, they ought to have appointed for a, a commission then? The simple answer, it really knows that nothing wrong was done. But he used it, and he's very good at this red herrings, nasty mm. comments about other people, below the belt shots. Mm. When the real crisis arises, he merely diverts attention, and of course the hounds go running behind him. So, you know, people are going on and on about Cabral. Cabral came before Corp repeatedly, we quizzed him over Corp, there were the Greek bonds, we asked him a lot, and Cabral said but, he but, took a risk, but, 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 but he sir. said, look at the whole portfolio that year. We actually, every other investment made a good profit. So you have to make losses if you're taking risks. Now, you can say it was a misjudgment, but one misjudgment out of ten is not criminal. Similarly, with regard to these bonds thing, the big complaint against Cabral, which I ran Vikram Ratna, and you will notice that in all this cacophony of defense of these crooks, mm. the one decent man in the UNP hasn't said a word. Iran Vikramaratna mm. has not tried to defend the bond scam. When we were doing COPE, mm. he was really very, very good because mm. he tried to maintain standards. Iran's point was the way Cabral managed the economy and our debts. Mm. He meant made people like the EPF take bonds mm. at a fixed interest rate which Iran said was below the market rate but as WA Vijay Vodhana told us standard practice is to have a mixed system where you fix the rate but then in order to get low rates for government you have direct placements not private as mm. they kept saying they're direct to agencies which you know have money which are also happy because these are guaranteed mm, so but these are at, at the average yield exactly mm. whereas what has now happened and I've asked Iran what he has to say about it what is very clear is that Mahendran gave bonds at massive rates of interest to his chums and the chums sold it to the EPF 
which therefore got a lower rate of interest, yeah. while someone else got a higher. They kept buying and selling and it. It is it disgraceful. And what Ranil really thought, and this shows his utter contempt for Parliament. You know, he announced yeah. when he appointed his pitiful Pitipana committee yeah. that, you know, you parliamentarians don't understand our bonds, you probably think it's Brooke Bond or James Bond, yeah. typical Ranil, you know, he throws in these Western allusions mm. Mm. and then impresses everybody, his Colombo cheerleaders. Yeah. And then, when in fact the Pitipana report came out and people wanted a debate in Parliament, he and Chamal gave it to Cook. And presumably they thought we wouldn't find out. And I'm very glad you couldn't say said at the press conference we had yesterday. He said one reason he asked me to come is he said you were the most incisive question of Mahendra. The point is there were a few people, and we go had a lot of people, but only about six of us went for this. Yeah. And we got the truth. And because we got the truth, Ranil wanted Parliament dissolved. He got his foreign agents to bully the president. Some of the people around the president mm. told me that they expected the president to make another sort of announcement and he came out of this meeting with these foreigners who I think threatened him with Geneva in a very nice way of course. Mm. And he promptly dissolved against a promise he made to his own party. And that was really bad because it was the first immoral thing that my Maitre Pala Sirisena did. Now then, uh, unfortunately all good things have come to an end and it has. Uh, Professor Raju Vijay Singh, thank you very much. Uh, one of our viewers from Candy, a regular viewer from Candy, says that uh, Professor Rajiv is not breathing fire today. Um, and he probably wants to know why, but you can explain all that the next time you're here. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Professor Rajiv Vijayasinghe. That's about it uh, on Thursday, January the 25th. Take care and God bless. News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukatali.